Denise has asked if I'd like to go to the craft circle with her on Friday night. Who's driving? I said I'd drive. They haven't used their car for the last week and a half. Oh. I mean, Denise is only asking you out so that you can take her. This is supposed to be a car share. John! We are not a taxi service for the Gasser family. I imagine that what we'll see is in big cities where there's going to be a lot of pressure, parts of social fabric will actually fall apart quite fast. In an oil shock, our lives will change. I, I think at the minute we, we currently worry about debt and credit cards and mortgages. However, this is another level of debt, effectively, that we'll all have to deal with. Whenever your take-home wage gets severely cut because of uh, the cost of energy and the cost of fuel, what you've seen, certainly in the past, is that theft rates rise dramatically. There have been many instances, even in 2005, of gasoline theft in the U.S. doubling, even during that slight increase in oil prices. Governments facing this oil shock will be faced with the same difficult decisions they were in the past. Is the oil shock sufficiently serious to warrant emergency measures? Hello? Nick? Yeah, yeah, I'm just getting some petrol. Were you asleep? No, no, no. I wasn't asleep. What? Jess? Listen. I'm pregnant. Jess, I can't hear you.
Somebody out here. I'm coming back in. Frightened the wolves, are you? Only when they show their teeth. As oil-producing countries struggle to meet global demand, Venezuela has threatened to quit OPEC and go it alone. President Chavez said on national television today it's payback time for the Yankees. So if Venezuela stopped exporting oil, that would cause an immediate shock in the rest of the world. You don't have to have anything more than that going on, but at the same time we then find that Russian oil is back in decline. But the way history seems to work is Murphy's Laws of Life and Well. When one bad thing happens, it usually triggers another. The end of the age of oil is already a messy affair. We're in the maybe the second to last act of the oil play, and it's getting more and more unpleasant. Cup of coffee? Sounds good. Moved. Price has. In Britain, you'll see on the one hand the same general impacts we've seen everywhere. Economic growth will slow, people will lose their jobs, people won't be able to afford their energy, but there'll be a real difficult decisions to be made, in particular, whether and to what degree to subsidize energy for the fuel poor. Nick! Rachel, um, I thought you cleaned yesterday. I did. I thought you'd be at work. Yeah, yeah, I should be. Is this your house? My flat, yes. I can't afford the heating. Not with food as well. Danielle's off school with her asthma. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Shall I make a cup of tea? We've got used to a world of centrally heated houses where if we're a little bit cold, we just turn the thermostat up. The um, end of cheap oil means we kind of go back to that world where actually some people get very cold if they can't afford heat. But even people who are better off actually live in a world where they're actually wearing warm clothes indoors. full of gas. You stupid man. As the price of goods got more and more expensive, people would just find it extremely hard uh, to live their lives the way they had been doing it. Certainly, for a number of years, life would not be very nice. <laughs> 